So Mac OS Ventura has been out for a little while now, and what I wanted to do in this video is show you guys my top five features that I personally use on a daily basis that probably aren't the fanciest or probably aren't the ones that are most marketed right now. Because obviously, we learned about the continuity camera, we learned about the new system settings, the new weather application, the new UI, but there's some other more nuanced features that I think will help you on a day-to-day -day basis from a productivity standpoint. So without further ado, let's talk about these five Mac OS Ventura features that I think you guys will get a lot of use from. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Clean My Mac X. 9 to 5 Mac is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. I've personally been a paying customer for years now, and no new Mac OS setup is complete without installing Clean My Mac X by MacPaw. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one utility that can help 9 to 5 Mac readers and viewers keep their Macs clean, fast, and protected in just a few clicks. It prevents any Mac from cluttering, lagging, and slowing down. For me, every Monday morning, like a ritual, I start up my Mac and run a clean sweep and scan of my Mac with Clean My Mac X to make sure everything is running optimally. Clean My Mac's all-new menu app helps you take care of your Mac's health with six detailed monitors that provide useful information about your Mac's storage, state of protection, CPU performance, RAM, battery, and network speeds. The menu app is totally free for all Mac users, but if you want a little more and to unlock the full experience, use the link in the description down below to receive a 5% discount for all 9to5 viewers. Thank you to Clean My Mac X by MacPaw for partnering up in 9to5, and now back to the video. So let's hop right into this video, everybody. The first feature that I do want to mention, which is, in my opinion, the most improved and the most powerful, has to be the all-new Spotlight. So to get into Spotlight, you just hit the little search button on the top right-hand corner of your toolbar, and Spotlight search on the surface probably doesn't look too different to a lot of people, but it's a nuanced features that got some big improvements. So Spotlight just essentially got a lot smarter. So I would normally use Spotlight to search in my files. So if I have a file that I wanna look up, or maybe there's a, a game or an app, like maybe Termius, which is an app that isn't normally on my dock, but I wanna open it up, I end up going to Spotlight to search for it. But now with Mac OS Ventura, it's gotten a lot more intuitive. So for instance, if you type in clock, you not only open up the clock application, you can actually smart start a timer. So if I go down, press enter, I get a nice little UI here. This is still in Spotlight technically to start a timer. So if I wanna do five seconds, let's do five minutes, press start. And then you can see that we have a timer running in the background, which I love to have. Some other things to take into account when it does come to Spotlight is that it actually got smarter when searching inside of images for photos and videos. So it's basically using that live text feature that Apple got with iOS 15 and iOS 16 to search for images. So if I type in dog, for instance, yes, it'll come up with some search results for dog and Dogecoin and things like that, but then it'll pull up photos from my photos application. It'll look into my mail. It'll look into everything that has a dog. And then if I type in something like Shiba Inu, it'll actually pull up images from Google or from the internet of what that dog actually looks like. So this is again, all has to do with live text, dictation, spotlight getting a lot smarter, the new UI is nice, but then even it works with, if I wanna look up, let's say the Miami Heat scores. So if I type in Miami Heat and I type in scores, you can see that it shows me the score right there, but if I also if I press enter, it'll give me some live stats right here. So again, I'm not leaving spotlight, but all the information that I need is gonna be right here, which sadly, my Miami Heat did lose. But that is spotlight, and that is probably my favorite new update with Mac OS Ventura. It's not what it looks like, but it's what it does, right? It's all about function over form, in my opinion. So now the next one has to be inside of the notes application. So inside of notes, we did get some new updates in terms of being able to lock a certain note. So as you guys can see right here, there's a little lock mechanism right here, a little lock icon that shows that it's unlocked. But if I wanna lock a note, you can actually just right click, press lock note, and it'll lock the note immediately. And the reason it does it immediately is because I set it in my settings. So if I go into notes, go into settings, and then scroll down to where it says lock notes down here, you can actually use a custom password. So I'm gonna change that setting right there. And then in this custom password, so every single time you lock a note, that is what the password is gonna be. So you can either use your system password, which is the password you use to actually log into your computer entirely, which uses Touch ID, or you can do a custom password and you can do it on a per note basis. And then to fully unlock it and remove the lock, just right click again, remove lock, and then it's gone. So that is being able to lock notes, which is great to have from a privacy standpoint. So if you have maybe, for instance, this holiday season, you have a significant other or somebody that you're making a list for of what to get them and you don't want them to see that list, you just lock it up and you're good to go. And now let's go into the photos application. So photos got a nice update and it's looking more and more like the photos application from iOS and iPad OS. So first off, you can see that we do have some more locked photos. So the first thing is the recently added is automatically a locked album. So whenever you have a locked album, it makes you put your touch ID in or your password and then you're into that locked album and you're good to go. But again, it's just recently deleted. 
and that is turned on by default. But if you want to turn that off, you go into your photos, go into your settings, and then on the bottom right here where it says privacy, you can actually toggle that off. So if you don't want to have your recently deleted folder locked, by all means go for it. And then you also have a hidden folder, which is also obviously locked at all times. Another thing to take notice of is with shared libraries. So up here on the top left hand corner, you see that there's a new feature up here or a new little toggle. So if I go into my library and press over here, I can actually change it from personal to shared library. And shared library came with iOS 16, iPadOS 16, and macOS Ventura. This is exactly what it sounds like. So if you go into your settings, go over here to this top right hand corner or the rightmost setting, which is shared library, and it lets you create a shared folder library. So whenever you take an image, whenever you move an image from your personal library to the shared library, anybody that's in that shared library will be able to view those photos. So again, it's exactly the same as it is in iOS and iPadOS, and you can add people, get rid of people, change the shared library. Just keep in mind that with the shared library, if you personally create it, then you're the one taking up your iCloud storage, no matter how many people are in it. So if you have 10 gigs of photos in there and you share with 20 people, you are the person that's taking up all 10 gigs on your iCloud and not the other people. So keep that in mind if that's something that you wanna do. But again, you can manage whether you're in your personal library or in your shared library. You can see that my shared library is actually empty. So I'd like to do both just in case. And then lastly, inside of the photos application, we got a new duplicates album, which I think is great. So in this, it just basically takes on all the duplicated photos and videos and gives you a couple options. So first you can just merge them, right? So merge the two exact copies, or you can actually just delete all the duplicates as well, or you can highlight them all and merge them all or delete all the duplicates as well. So having the duplicates folder is nice because it helps you save storage. Like for instance, this is 108 megabytes. This is 1.6 gigs that I'm taking up twice when I don't need to be. So I'm probably gonna delete that or merge them and I'll be good to go. And if you merge them, it essentially is deleting the other one. It's just adding maybe a little bit more data from the other one if it is a little bit different, but keep that in mind. So feature number four is actually this new pass key. So Apple has slowly but surely been taking up your password management with things like iCloud Keychain, which is basically what we've had for a couple of years now, but now Apple's rebranding it as passkey. And it's essentially the same thing with some added features. And what I really like about it is if I go over here to Yahoo, let's say I'm creating an account, you know, Fern test, test, Fern test. Like that'll be my Yahoo email. But now when you go on here, you actually have a couple of new options. So normally Apple would, with their own determination, decide which password is best for you. But again, each website has a different option, right? Some websites need alphanumeric, some don't allow exclamation points, some don't allow hyphens and things like that or periods. So here you have to have a couple other options. So you can do easy to type, which again is pretty much all letters and numbers, no special characters, so it removes all the hyphens from there. And obviously you can choose your own or edit the strong password too, and just click on here to save this password and you'll be good to go. So that is a new feature, which basically allows you to customize the auto-generated password by Apple, which is a great little feature to have, and I've been using it a ton. Okay, and then feature number five, which will round us off, is actually inside of FaceTime. So if you're receiving a FaceTime, and let's say you're near your phone, so you pick it up on your phone first, and I join that FaceTime call, you can actually see that on my screen here on my Mac, there's a new button up here that shows up. So currently I'm live with a FaceTime call from my wife, so if I go on here and switch to the actual Mac, I'm able to now move it no matter where I am. And then I can just join from here. So if I join on here, then you can see that I'm actually FaceTiming, that I moved the FaceTime from my phone, which is where I answered it from. And then I moved it to my Mac, which is great because let's say you pick up the iPhone. Let's say you're coming back. Let's say you're walking somewhere and you answer the FaceTime while you're walking, while you're walking to the office. And then you wanna go and actually move that FaceTime because it's important to the actual MacBook. Now you can do that seamlessly, and that's just the beauty of the ecosystem, everybody. But let's finish up this video. Let me know what you guys think about this view with the screen recording and letting you guys know this explainer walkthrough, but let's get out of this view and finish it up. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, macOS Ventura is actually bringing a lot of smaller features that are gonna help you on a day-to-day -day basis. And personally, my favorite feature has to be that Spotlight is just a lot smarter than it used to be. I was a big Spotlight user for a very long time and obviously I still am. And just with those new iterations and those new improvements makes my life a lot easier because now I'm not just using Spotlight to search for a file in my file system. I'm now looking at Spotlight to search for stuff on the web. I'm looking at Spotlight to look at scores of the latest Miami Heat game. I'm using Spotlight to search for images inside of my photo library. So the improvements to Spotlight and the new UI have been an absolute game changer for me. And I, and I highly recommend starting to use Spotlight a lot more because I use it not only on my Mac, but I use it on my iPad all the time. So leave a comment down below of what your favorite feature was that was mentioned here, or leave a comment of your favorite feature that wasn't mentioned on here that maybe I should check out and try out and see if it's worth 
worth adding it into my workflow. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And definitely stay subscribed and enter those giveaways on the accessory videos that have been coming out over the last few days. The next one should be a MacBook video, then a desk setup video, and finally a budget video for everybody to take advantage of these holiday deals. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you guys wanna watch some more iPadOS, macOS, or iOS videos, click on one of these right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Big thanks to Clean My Mac X for partnering with 9to5Mac again. Peace. Also, definitely check out Clean My Mac X because I've been using it for forever.